good day students welcome to class university schools we are having government now in our last class we talked about the Arthur Richards constitution where we look at the features of Richard constitution merits and the merits of Richard constitution and I hope you've not forgotten that the Richard Arthur Richard was the person who succeeded the governor Bernard Bodilon. Then Bernard Bodilon succeeded the governor then who was the Clifford South Clifford who was the governor in the 1922. But in order not to waste our time this today we want to continue with lesson three, which is Mafasin Constitution. Mafasin Constitution. Mafasin Constitution. This is another governor that actually succeeded uh, the Arthur Richard, the governor in 1946. The, before we proceed, the picture you are seeing here is the picture of the colonial governors in the, that and involved in the constitutional development of Nigeria before the independence. Then we now proceed to proceed to to the introduction to Mafasin Constitution. Now, John Mafasin was the one who succeeded at Richard, as uh, we as we had it earlier in 1948. So after the Expiration of the time of the Arthur Richard Constitution, it was John Mafasin that took over from him as the governor of Nigeria then. So, and this uh, Arthur Richard, this uh, John Mafasin saw the need for the constitutional reform of Nigeria. So, as a country, he took a step towards that effect. In the course of doing that, he established a committee to look into the shortcomings of the Arthur Richard Constitution, the Constitution that was started that started with uh, Bernard Bodino. So he organized, uh, sorry, they established a committee to look into the Constitution and to make reforms to those uh, areas where there are shortcomings. This uh, John Mafasin, the governor we had, he did well by trying to make a wider consultations so yeah, sorry a wider consultation went to the villages and province province to seek for the opinion of uh, elders leaders in the nigeria so he provided a constitution that took care of the uh, areas that nigerians were having uh, problems and challenges so he went to the regional assemblies and uh, consulted villages and other provinces in the consultation and the clear in the course of reforming the constitution. So, in the further in, in 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 continuation, the constitution was approved by regional assembly and central legislative council before the final submission to the governor. So, before the constitution was approved by the governor, the Regional assemblies and the Central Legislative Council examined the content very well to ensure that the constitution make provisions and amendment to wherever there are there were shortcomings to that of um, Arthur Richard Constitution before it was submitted to the governor. So uh, John Mafasin actually gave them the opportunity to really do that before he got to him for approval. Got to him for approval then. Then in 1951, we started to use the constitution in Nigeria. The constitution, the, the constitution came to effect in the year 1951. So the, as we see, the constitution has uh, the constitution had some some features. But before we look at the features, the picture we can see here, the picture we can see here is the picture of the Sir John Mafaxin, the then governor, in 1951 after the actual recharge in the government. 
So therefore, we move to the features of the Mafasin Constitution. So we have a number of features here. Number one, the Mafasin Constitution provided for the regional executive council at each region. Now, here we have three regions as we had in the Atorichard Constitution. So we, in the Mafasin Constitution, is still continuing to maintain the same regional setup. So we had three, three regions as we had in the North, West, and uh, the, the East, respectively. So the same thing still continued with that. So, uh, but the good thing about this uh, regional uh, arrangement was that he tried to make them uh, to provide to provide a regional council, executive council with them, whereby they will be able to have a body on their own to actually embark on uh, some uh, regional governors in the in the Nigeria. Then the second one was that uh, the second one was that there was a bicameral legislation in the northern and the western region. So. What we are saying here is that in the northern and western uh, region, there were bicameral legislature, which means two legislative houses in the northern and uh, western region. But in the eastern part, in the eastern region, there was only one house of assembly, which is unicameral legislature in, in the eastern part. So in the northern and the western part, where we, are, we had uh, bicameral legislature, there are there were the house of our chiefs and the house of assembly. We had the house of house of chiefs and the house of assembly in the northern and the western region, respectively. Why in the unicameral legislature where there was the unicameral legislature in the eastern region, which is only one house of our assembly. So the picture you are looking at here, this is the picture of the executive council we had during the. Uh, Mafasin constitution, then the other one is the northern, the northern legislature. So these are the pictures for the these are the pictures we have to the effect of the points we have explained here. Then the third one is the the third one is that it gave room to both direct and indirect election. So the Mafasin constitution we are talking about allowed election for, for elections, but it permitted both direct and indirect elections into the legislative uh, houses into the legislative houses so therefore when we talk about direct election we are talking about a kind of election that the citizens directly uh, vote in the person or the candidate of their choice into the legislature then when we say indirect election this is a kind of election where we have a electoral college that elected on behalf of the people in the country. Then we move further to see the, the, the picture of electoral process here. So this is a kind of a direct election. And this, uh, these are specimens for the voters, uh, the voters, uh, the voters uh, papers and the presiding officer at the club assisting assisting here yeah. you can see it here yeah. then the other one is which is number four of the, is that in the north only made taxpayers were allowed to vote while the, in the west and east both genders were allowed to vote so what we are saying here is that in the north only male that that were only the male gender that were that was paying tax. I mean, the men that were they were paying taxes were allowed to vote, which is a kind of a restricted franchise. Women were disenfranchised. So, and the out of the male gender we are talking about, those who were not paying tax were not. Those who were not paying taxes were not allowed to actually perform their civil to actually perform their civil rights there. So it was a kind of limited or restricted. Uh, franchise then in the west and east so both male and female the both genders were allowed to vote which is a kind of a, a universal adult suffrage there that were or that was permitted so it is now it is a kind of a system that does not that did not allow uniformity in the electoral process in the country that then then we move to number five here. 
which is the governor could sometimes take decision decisions or act without the advice of the council of ministers if he thought that was best in the public interest so what we are saying here is that the the governor that is sir that is sir Littleton, i mean sorry sir john mafaxen rather sir john mafaxen took decisions without uh without consulting or seeking for the advice of the ministers from various uh, various uh, regions that were there to, to work with him uh, in the executive council. So whenever he felt that uh, the decision is to take was uh, the best of the, the best interest of the people of the public, he went ahead to to make to make such decisions. So he did not wait for them. So I think this is to uh, to make a governor to make quick decisions for the girl for the country then another thing we are considering here is the merits is merits of the marriage of the mafasin constitution merits of the mafasin constitution now number one is that nigeria at all levels up to the village districts were consulted in the making of the constitution it was largely people's constitution now from the features we had earlier so we'll be able to see how we can relate the features to advantages and uh, disadvantages so in order to facilitate learning here or transfer learning so that is the best method so features we can look at the features we have and then begin to see where they are suitable for the advantages and disadvantages of our mafasin constitution here now Nigeria at all levels up to the village and district were consulted in the making of the constitution. So it was largely people's constitution. So the salient point there is that it is largely people's constitution because Nigerians were consulted in the course of making that constitution from villages to village, villages to village, from one village to another, from one district or province to another. So the, the, the leaders, the headers, and the people were consulted at large in order to ensure that the constitution takes care, take the constitution took care of every issues that uh, the the Richard constitution failed to address. Then the other one is the the number two here is the Richard the constitution granted more powers to the regional houses of assembly to make laws. So here. Yeah, the Mafasin Constitution granted more powers, unlike that of a uh, Richard Constitution, which did not. So the Mafasin Constitution granted more powers to the regional house of as houses of assembly to make law. That is, the regional house in the north, in the east, and the west, they were granted the power, a partial legislative autonomy to some extent to actually to actually make uh, make laws. And don't forget that in the Richard Constitution that was not allowed. Every law to be made, every law must be referred to the, the the central legislative council, where it will be passed to law. Such was such was such advantage was not given in the Richard Constitution. So then the other one is the third, the third one is the legislative houses consisted of elected Nigerians and were no longer dominated by the nominees or as official. Now when we say the legislative houses consisted of the elected Nigerians. That means those who are who are acting as the legislators in the legislature, in the legislative house houses, they were they were they were elected by the people of Nigeria. So there was a true democratic uh, uh, democratic uh, process there. So in the in the in the course of electing the legislators. And in the case of Richard Constitution where People do, where uh, nominees and their sense of issue dominated the legislative houses. Such was not uh, involved in this uh, mafasin constitution. So it, were, it ensured that the house was uh, full of the elected Nigerians at the interest of the Nigerians as well. Then this um, this marked the basis 
for rule for self rule and adequate representation in Nigeria. Then the, the, the fourth one here is the fourth one here is the Nigerians who are appointed ministers for the first time at both central and regional level. So when we say the Nigerians were appointed ministers for the first time at both central and regional level, we are what that simply means that those who are supposed to be the, who were uh, the uh, body who, com who comprised of the executive council at the central and the and at the regional levels were appointed for the first time to uh, exercise some ministerial uh, functions or powers over the, over the ministries or agencies of the government and this was uh, this was a great opportunity to nigeria for the first time to actually took uh, to actually involved in the administration of the the parastatus or ministries in nigeria then another one is it furthered the process of federalism in nigeria by giving the region regions much autonomy now what we say when we talk about federalism Federalism, federalism simply means constitutional sharing of powers between the government at the center and its component units or the states or the regions. So sharing of the powers and functions, constitutional sharing of powers and functions between the government at the center and its component units. Uh, so the component units could be regions or states. So therefore, it continue with federalism as we had it in Richard Constitution, Richard Constitution that laid the foundation for the federalism in Nigeria. So he also con the, the Mafasi Constitution also continue with the same, it did not abolish it. Then in Nigeria by giving the regions much autonomy. So the, the fact that Nigeria uh, continued with federalism, so the regions enjoyed some level of autonomy and to exercise some functions in some areas in the country uh, and in the, in, the rest, in the different regions we had in Nigeria as well. So these are the picture of the regional representatives that we had, regional representative that we had in Nigeria. This is the picture of uh, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, then Sir Tafa Balewa here, then Sir Madu Bilo, then Dr. Inandi Azikwe. Uh, Dr. Inadi Azikwe here. So then we now move to the the merits of Mavasin Constitution. The merits of Mavasin Constitution. Now the first one here is too much powers were concentrated in central legislature. Too much powers were concentrated in central legislature. What we are saying here is that the 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 powers that were vested in the central legislature was too much was too much don't forget that the central legislature is the legislative body at the center federal level that uh, makes that see to the processes of making law and makes law for the country so there are so much power that you are that were, were in their hands and such can lead to auto, uh, uh, autocratic leadership or sometimes it may the, 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 it may delay in the process of exercising some functions in some uh, regions. So this power was supposed this power was supposed to shed with the regional with the regional with the region uh, legislatures for for better governance. But it wasn't like that. Then another problem that is associated with that is that the governor also had too much power, too much power uh, assigned to him. So which did not uh the which did not help the decision making process of uh of our country in nigeria then then another thing is the which is number two is the central governor also had too much powers to act uh against the advice of the executive council now there are uh, the 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 executive council decision mostly override overrode that of the executive council uh, many 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 a time he took decisions at his own will which at the same time will not uh, seek for the opinion of the executive council so which 
is like a, a kind of a dictator, a dictatorship in the land. Then the other one is, which is number three, is the, the ministerial had no overall control over the ministerial had, the ministers had no overall control over the ministries and departments. They were made heads. So what you're saying is that in the various ministries that the ministers were, were made to serve as the heads, they had no overall control over them. So the executive council and the, uh, the governor, Sir John Mafasin, then did not uh, give them the power to exercise overall functions or uh, control over those uh, ministry and department which affect the effectiveness of such uh, ministries and departments in 1951 to 1954. Then the other one is the regionalism. Regionalism was in the problems of the ethnicity and mutual distrust in Nigeria politics. So since we had three regions then in Nigeria, so each region were, were just after, each of the region were just after their people and to the extent that it, uh, it, 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 it led to the increase in uh, ethnicity and mutual distrust in Nigeria politics, to the extent that Yorubas were after the welfare of the Yorubas, ign uh, ignoring the art of, uh, that of Aousa or Igbo, then the, in the East, the, the, the Eastern were after the welfare of the Eastern part of the country, as well as that of not. So at the end of the day, it continued to be the destroyed ethnicity and distrust in Nigerian politics. Then number five is that mass political participation was in that. The mass political participation was in that in the north because male taxpayers were only allowed to vote. So there was a kind of disenfranchisement which did not encourage mass political uh, participation in the in the in the poly, in the in the political uh, structure of the Nigeria in 1951 to 1954 because only men that were paying taxes were allowed to actually exercise their civil right to exercise to to exercise their civil right to vote in the civic rights to vote in the in the Nigeria in the Nigeria in Nigeria then and this actually could not give uh, could not produce the 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 candidate or rep true represent representative for the for the west for the northern region so to some extent it is not even to produce a good uh, representative for the western for the northern region so these are the the merit of the Mafasin constitution so don't forget that we are look at the features of the Mafasin constitution we are talking about the the merits of the Mafasin Constitution and the demerit of Mafasin Constitution. So then we have this uh, exercise to attend here. So we have to attend the exercise as well as the assignment that we have, you have here. So you have to attend and uh, submit before the, the last class. So we have come to the end of the class. Please make sure you study hard, study it very well. Then, as you are just as you are doing that, use the content of this uh, of the lesson to answer the the uh, the exercises at the evaluation part. Thank you and stay safe at home. God bless you. I welcome to school. I've seen better schools.